kindly give an answers regarding hmm? isotization titration Dioxid. yeah proceed rajkumar dioxide dioxide titration vand uh, primary aromatic amine dioxanim compound of uh, uh, total process of dioxide amine aromatic amine uh, dioxin sorry ma'am sorry ma'am sorry Yeah, proceed, Rajkumar. It was correct only what you said. Ma'am, primary mm, yeah. aromatic amine, diosinium compound, ma'am, and uh, diosinium titration. Yeah, that reaction is monitored through titration analysis. Okay. Once the reaction is completed, the endpoint is noted hmm? yes, for yes. amount calculation. Yes. Mm. What are all the reagents involved in converting uh, primary aromatic amine to diosinium salt? Ma'am, first we have a primary aromatic amine, ma'am. That's why we have sodium nitrate and hydrochloric acid. Nitrate right or nitrate? Nitrate, ma'am. Yeah. Mm. Sodium nitrate and uh, hydrochloric acid, ma'am. Yeah. This is why we have nitrous acid, ma'am. Yeah. Mm. The nitrous acid is a primary aromatic amine. We have nitrous amine obtained or a compound for them. Other totemized in the name of the Yosin. Okay. Upper, um, uh, um, endpoint to uh, endpoint direct on the the three methods is for them. One of the um, external indicator is for your method, ma'am. External indicator among stats I read paper is for them. Yeah. Namak on the dark color change, blue color change here. Mm. Yeah, whenever mm. starch reacts with the iodine, it will give blue color. Okay, so best indication to detect uh, iodine is starch. Mm. Uh, to detect starch is iodine. Iodine is the reagent to detect uh, starch, it will give you blue color. Okay, mm. okay. Mm. Say about this one, the first man, second one, the nana, uh, iodine is. Uh, Starch, mucilage, potassium, and the other one is the same as the diosonic. The diosonic is the same as the diosonic. The third one is the electrodes. The platinum electrodes are the same as the electrometric method. Thank you. Thank you, Rajkumar. And your doubt will be clarified. Yes, what the doubts you caused will be clarified within next class. Hmm? Okay, okay. Thank okay. you. Hmm. Let's proceed with the today's class. Anybody else would like to give answers on uh, diacetization concept behind diacetization titration? Only Rajkumar has studied. Uh, hmm? 98 members are there, right? So among 98 members, only one person attended uh, diacetization titration. Uh. What about others? I give chance to others also to share your answers. No. Okay, let's proceed with the today's class. Don't want to waste time. So in the last class, we have seen uh, diacetization titration. There is the formation of diazonium compound from primary aromatic amine. As per your syllabus, we are discussing uh, regarding basic principles, methods, and applications of diacetization titration. In that, we have seen about basic principles and that introduction. Before moving on to uh, basic principles, we have seen introduction on diacetization titration mm, when it was discovered and uh, who was discovered uh, and what is the actual concept a uh, conclusion or uh, overall summary of diacetization titration was discussed under introduction part right peter grison in uh, 1853 discovered diacetization titration for the conversion of primary aromatic amine to diazonium salt and this reaction is monitored through a titration method then what are the basic principles we have seen 
principle behind the isotification titration, the reagents and chemical reaction involved we have seen. And temperature maintenance is most important since between 0 and 5 degrees Celsius only the isonium compound will form. Okay. So the principle also was discussed. Then theory, mm, individual reaction steps involved in disotization titration was discussed briefly. Mm. Conversion of uh, as the first step, conversion of sodium nitrate to so, uh, nitrous acid. Uh, this is nitrous acid. HNO2 is nitrous acid. NNO2 is nitri uh, sorry, sodium nitrate. When it reacts with the concentrated hydrochloric acid, it will immediately give nitrous acid. Uh, and this nitrous acid reacts with primary aromatic amine to give disonium salt. Uh, in between that, an intermediate compound is formed that is nitrous amine. That is going for tautomerization and it gives uh, disonium salt. Mm. If any excess of nitrous acid is there, that will be removed by addition of, uh, in order to eliminate this nitrous acid from titration, if at all you require during titration, then it is removed by ammonium sulfamate solution. Okay. And the endpoint is detected by starch iodide paper. This is the external indicator we are using in um, uh, uh, disodization titration process. Mm. Or else we can, um, and this di so, uh, means starch iodide paper will be composed of potassium iodide and starch mucilage. Uh, it is taken as a paper and it is used as an external indicator. It is not added inside. Um, even we can add inside as potassium iodide solution and starch mucilage also as indicators to detect the endpoint. Um, so endpoint reaction is mentioned here where potassium iodide is converted to hydrogen iodide and this is getting oxidized by nitrous acid uh, where uh, nitrous acid uh, has been derived um, that is from sodium nitrate. Uh. So what is the role of nitrous acid? It is converting primary aromatic amine to disonium compound. What is the role of nitrous acid? It converts primary aromatic amine to nit uh, disonium salt. Um. Once uh, all the primary aromatic amine, what is primary aromatic? Amine, it is your sample on a light. Once it is converted to disonium salt, what happens? The excess nitrous acid will be there. Once the end it reaches end point, uh, at the end point, nitrous acid will be there uh, with excess of excess of nitrous acid will be exist in the titration process. Uh. And this nitrous acid, what it does, it converts hydrogen iodide to iodine. Uh, where iodine reacts with starch mucilage, it gives blue color endpoint. So this is the actual process of uh, disodization titration method. And in the procedure, we have seen the general procedure of uh, disodization method. Mm, here, they have used potassium bromide inside. Uh, when it is reacted with potassium iodide, bromides uh, will be replaced with iodides. And this iodides will be oxidized by nitrous acid and it will be converted to uh, iodine. Uh, and that iodine will react with starch mucilage to give endpoint. Mm. And all the reactions are carried out at 0 and 5 degrees Celsius. In ice bath only, disodization titration is carried out. Uh, so that is specific for disodization method. Dye formation and external indicator and uh, temperature maintenance. Uh, these three are unique for disodization method. Okay. And there are uh, three uh, um, indicator uh, deduction, endpoint deduction methods. Uh, one is uh, using external indicator as starch iodide paper and then immersing platinum electrodes uh, that means the potash, uh, potentiometric titration method that method is called desktop endpoint method where we'll be immersing pair of platinum electrodes one platinum electrode will be polarizable that means uh, it will be changing with the concentration of solution mm, present in the titration during titration that means a uh, conical class uh, conical flask content will be changing uh, uh, with the concentration right so that will be monitored by polarizable electrodes uh, and one more will be uh, non polarizable electrode and which will not be changing with the concentration uh, and non polarizable means it will not be oxidized or reduced the electrode will be either not um, oxidized or reduced where polarizable electrode will be going for both oxidation and reduction uh, and when it occurs, when the sample concentration is changed, uh, once it is reaching the end point, at that point, the, uh, the titration itself it will be automatically stopped. That means the electrodes will be stopping its deduction. So that represents the end point has been reached. So that is represented with dead stop end point method. Okay.
So this is another endpoint detection method, electrometric method. And one more is back titration actually, this one, endpoint detection. Third method is, the next method for detection of endpoint in the diazotization is by adding potassium iodide to the nitrous acid. So in the conical flask itself, instead of using uh, iodide paper, we'll be adding potassium iodide to the nitrous acid itself with excess acid, uh, which liberates iodine. That means mm, nitrous acid, once it is reached the endpoint, the excess acid represents excess acid, key here represents excess nitrous acid after reaching endpoint uh, and that converts potassium iodide to iodine mm. and this liberated iodine in the solution will be reacting or uh, it will be back titrated with sodium thiosulfate sodium thiosulfate is reducing agent where iodine is oxidizing agent okay so using this this iodine, uh, once all the iodine reacts with uh, sodium thiosulfate, the excess iodine will be reacting with starch and it gives blue color. Okay, so this is what uh, another endpoint deduction uh, takes place in the diazotization method. Okay, now let's move on to other principles behind uh, diazotization methods. Mm -hmm. So, in uh, we are discussing as per the contents, basic principles, methods, and applications. In basic principles, some more concepts to be discussed. And we have seen principle theory and endpoint deduction behind diazotization method. Now let's see about methods and applications and few uh, titles regarding basic principles. So what are the factors affecting diazotization process? Uh, since it is a unique process where it is was carried out at um, low temperature that to uh, very freezing condition, uh, zero to five degrees Celsius only it is conducted and uh, specific reagents are used for the conversion of disonium salt, uh, formation of disonium salt. So we are adding different reagents, how it affects and how the temperature will affect your disonium salt formation uh, so definitely various factors will affect the diazotization process and let's see what are all the factors will affect this disonium salt formation mm. and first one is the acid concentration acid represents a higher concentrated hydrochloric acid okay so first one acid concentration concentrated hydrochloric acid if it is uh, increased more then also it will affect the conversion of uh, sodium nitrate uh. then ph of the sodium nitrate mm. sodium nitrate ph should be acidic only right and uh, so it should not be basic that's why we are adding acid to it to maintain acidic condition so it will be converted to nitrous acid so ph of the sodium nitrate is important then uh, temperature of the reaction it should be maintained between 0 and 5 degrees celsius the disonium compounds are decomposed at elevated temperatures if uh, the temperature is increased then definitely disonium compounds will go for decomposing that means degradation it will go for degradation it will not exist it will not be stable at higher temperature that's why the temperature is maintained between 0 and 5 degrees celsius then the reaction time it takes 10 to 15 minutes to form disonium formation the compounds reacts with nitrous acid at different rates based on the nature of the compound the compound nature according to nature of the compound it will be nature of the compound represents primary aromatic amine uh, according to its nature it will react accordingly with the nitrous acid so it may take 10 to 15 minutes time for completion of reaction then the fifth factor is slow diazotisable uh, groups. Mm. That means it will diminish the diazonium salt formation. And the groups will decrease the diazonium salt formation. That's why the reaction will become slow. For what kind of uh, groups means sulfur groups? If the sulfur groups containing primary aromatic amines are there, it will decrease the process of formation of disonium salt. Then carboxylic group, carboxylic acids, if it is present, then that will also diminish the formation of disonium salt. Then nitrous and uh, nitrogen oxide groups, nitrogen oxide groups. So these all will interact with the uh, disonium salt formation and it will decrease the disonium salt formation and which uh, will increase the uh, disodization process means annelide toledine aminophenol that means amine uh, nitrogen containing groups aminophenol toledine uh, and annelide this all will be having nitrogen in it 
so it will be making disodium salt formation very fast it speeds up the disodization process where these all slows huh? and so these are all six factors will affect the disodization process what are all the six factors acid concentration concentration of hcl then ph of NaNO2 that is sodium nitrate then temperature of the reaction reaction time then slow disodizable groups fast disodizable groups mm. slow means sulfur carboxyl groups nitrogen oxide groups this all will be uh, reducing the reaction uh, that means reaction time will be increased where it slows the reaction of formation of disonium salt where this all will be increasing our speeds of the formation of disonium salts so the reaction time will be reduced with fast disodizable groups and with the slow disodizable groups reaction time will be increased so these are all various factors six factors will affect the disodization process hmm? acid concentration ph of the sodium nitrate hmm? mostly it will be acidic ph only in acidic condition only the disodization process takes place so ph of that sodium nitrate solution is important then um, the temperature of the reaction reaction time slow disodizable groups then fast disodizable groups next uh, let's see about uh, conditions for the disodization titration hmm? the same we have seen under uh, factors only given so here uh, we will uh, discuss the same again and uh, with another title whatever factors we have seen the same to be uh, to be maintained as conditions for isodization reaction one is rate of titration and the one is temperature mm. rate of titration is that is uh, only the uh, rate of reaction uh, rate of uh, reaction addition of sodium nitrate to the sample solution rate represents speed hmm? speed of titration how it will be affected slow groups will be decreasing slow disodizable group will be decreasing the rate hmm? where um, fast will be increasing the rate that's what uh, mentioned with rate of titration hmm? so this to be maintained during the titration so uh, if you find a slow disodizable groups then you could add or substitute with fast disodizable groups also hmm? the addition of sodium nitrite to the sample solution takes time to react to the amino group present in the sample solution different amino compounds react with the nitrous acid at different rates based on this the amino compounds are classified into two main groups um, they are as follows the one is slow disodizable compounds another one is fast disodizable compounds um, and the reaction rate is increased by addition of potassium bromide solution see here potassium bromide why we are adding the reaction rate is increased so rate of reaction is increased with potassium bromide solution um, what are the slow disodizable compounds sulfanilic acid and uh, anantranilic acid uh, and these two acids are primary aromatic amines sulfanilic acid and anthranilic acid where uh, what are the fast disodizable compounds aniline aminophenol and toluene these are fast disodizable compounds from which we can get easily disodium uh, salts hmm? so this is how rate of reaction is altered and this is increased by the addition of potassium bromide solution now you come to know the reason for adding potassium bromide solution during a uh, titration okay it increases or it fast up the reaction rate of reaction will be uh, means uh, what a uh, boosted up or it will be elevated uh, or it will be speeded up whatever you can say that is achieved by adding potassium bromide solution okay so all are listening right so how rate of reaction will be uh, increased or decreased based on the disodizable compounds um, some compounds will be forming disonium salt easily and some will be forming very slowly yeah? so what are the compounds will form very slowly disodization compound uh, disodization uh, disonium salt that is sulfanilic acid and anthranilic acid which will form very slowly and that time we can add potassium bromide to that compounds uh, during the titration so that potassium bromide will uh, boost up the reaction mm. 
where fast disodiable compounds like aniline, amino phenol, and toluidine, we no need to add potassium bromide. It will be immediately giving a disonium salt. Mm -hmm. And next condition is temperature. Maintenance of the temperature is the main condition for disotization titration. Since the disonium salts formed are not stable at elevated temperature that already we have seen, right? If it uh, increases above 5 degrees Celsius, the disonium salts will not exist. It will go for decomposition or degradation. Uh, and it is prevented by maintaining the temperature between 0 and 5 degrees Celsius. Okay. So this is what temperature maintenance. So these are two conditions for the disodization titration. First one is uh, rate of titration. Another one is temperature. Mm -hmm. Rate of titration is increased by which reagent? Potassium bromide reagent. And what are the compounds are slow disodizable compounds? Sulfonylic acid and anhydrinic acid. What are fast disodizable compounds? Aniline, aminophenol and toluene. Mm -hmm. And uh, temperature 0 to 5 degrees Celsius. Mm -hmm. If it increased, what happens? The degradation of disonium salts takes place. And let's see about the second part methods. Mm. Can anyone say the uh, may explain what we have discussed factors and conditions? Just give the side headings on uh, factors and conditions for disodization titration. Give answers on factors and conditions for disodization titration. No answers. Mark, factors, mm -hmm. factors affecting the disodization titration. Mm -hmm. uh, acid concentration. Yes. Of the NaNO2. Mm -hmm. Temperature of reaction. Reaction mm -hmm. time. Low disodization group. Fast mm. dissolving group. Okay. Conditions when the uh, rate of titration, mm. uh, temperature ma'am. Rate of titration when the uh, increased by potassium bromide. Okay. The two groups are uh, slow dissolvable compound, fast dissolvable okay. compound. Uh, temperature when the zero point five degrees. Zero to five degree, not zero point five. Zero to five degree. Okay. Okay. okay thank you, Pavitra. Pavitra P. Mm. Thank you, ma'am. Now let's go move on to the second part of diastatization method methods. Um, what are the different types of methods uh, followed uh, in diastatization method? One is direct titration, another one is indirect titration method, then other methods. Uh, let's see what are direct, indirect, and other methods for diastatization process. Hmm. First, let's see about direct method. The main principle involved in this method is to treat the amino group, that is primary amino group, mm, primary aromatic amino group containing drug with the acid solution. So what is the first step involved? The main principle involved in this method is to treat the amino group containing drug with the acid solution. What acid? Nitrous acid. Mm. The resulting solution is immersed in the cold water bath and ice or ice water bath by maintaining the temperature at 0 to 5 degrees Celsius. Then the solution is titrated with the sodium nitrate. That is, the sodium nitrate is taken as titrant. Uh, titrate will be your amino group containing compound. Mm. The endpoint is determined by the above mentioned methods. So, what are the methods we have seen? Endpoint method external. Indicator method using starch iodide paper, the reaction is monitored between sodium nitrate and amino group. Okay. And it is acidified with concentrated hydrochloric acid. And uh, you know now the concept behind the reaction between sodium nitrate and um, uh, concentrated hydrochloric acid. And at acidic pH, it will be converted to nitrous acid. And that nitrous acid reacts with amino group. That is the concept here in direct method. Okay, so to sodium uh, titrate is taken as a uh, titrant and your titrate analyte will be your primary aromatic amine group. That is conical plus content here is aromatic amine group. Buret content is uh, sodium nitrate uh, and the condition is maintained in ice water bath uh, between 0 and 5 degrees Celsius as temperature maintenance. Mm. Here no need uh, in case uh, if slow diacetizable compound you are using for analysis through diacetization titration then you need to add potassium bromide 
to it otherwise no need of adding potassium bromide if for uh, aniline and all uh, like fast disodiable compounds we can directly titrate with sodium nitrate so this is called direct method and another one is indirect method indirect means definitely we'll be going with um, and back titration right back titration only indirect method uh, whatever released in the conical flask uh, whatever reagent released in the conical flask will be titrated back with some another uh, titrant okay so that is called indirect method indirect method otherwise called as back titration method mm -hmm. and here the principle involved in this method is excess of nitrous acid is added to the titration uh, sample solution and it will be back titrated with other appropriate titrant that means excess nitrous acid will be there no once diazonium salt is formed and uh, formed and that will be back titrated with other appropriate titrant mm. and this method is mainly used to for the titration of insoluble diazonium salts if it is soluble then we cannot go for back titration it will, since uh, nitrous acid reaction will be reversible for soluble diazonium salts for insoluble diazonium salts only nitrous acid whatever there in the excess acid it will not go for reversible reaction or uh, it will not uh, solubilize the salt once diazonium salt is formed it is insoluble so it will not come back for the um, uh, means the reaction will be irreversible not reversible reversible means backward reaction is possible with a back titration process only forward reaction is possible once primary aromatic amine is converted to diazonium salt it will not reform back to uh, primary aromatic amine so that time am uh, nitrous acid will be there as such so excess nitrous acid will be titrated back with another appropriate type so that is called indirect method in direct method directly primary aromatic amine is the with sodium nitrate and here uh, sodium nitrate will be added inside the conical flask itself along with the primary aromatic amine to form diazonium salt once all the uh, uh, primary aromatic amine has formed diazonium salt the excess nitrous acid will be there in the conical flask now and that will be back titrated with appropriate titrant mm -hmm. this is the nitrous acid is oxidizing agent a titrant will be of uh, reducing agent for example the sodium thiosulfate we can take uh, and um, here uh, you can add a uh, end point reduction third method we have discussed now in that case it will be followed uh, just uh, we'll go through that mm -hmm. Here, excess nitrous acid is titrated with sodium uh, thiosulfate, uh, where potassium iodide will be added to the nitrous acid, and this nitrous acid will convert iodide to iodine, and the liberated iodine will be titrated with sodium thiosulfate, where starch uh, used as indicator, external indicator. So this is what um, indirect method, back titration method. So nitrous acid will be oxidizing agent. It will oxidize potassium iodide to iodine. Iodine also again oxidizing agent, and it will be oxidizing sodium thiosulfate. Uh, titrant represents sodium thiosulfate. Burette content in back titration will be sodium thiosulfate, where conical flask content will be iodine. It is liberated. Where uh, from where it is liberated from potassium iodide added to the conical flask solution, and uh, how the potassium iodide converted to iodine by means of excess nitrous acid. Mm -hmm. How nitrous acid is formed from sodium nitrate in presence of acid. Okay. Um, uh, once uh, nitrous acid is formed, it converts potassium iodide to excess nitrous acid is there, it will convert it to iodine. And this iodine will be back titrated with uh, sodium thiosulfate. Sodium thiosulfate is your burette content. And what is the in, uh, indicator starch? Uh, then appearance of blue color is the end point. So this is how uh, back titration method is carried out. So that is called indirect method. Uh, no uh, sodium nitrate or... Um, primary aromatic amine is directly interacting uh, that means with the burette and uh, conical flask content here it is back titrated all the contents we are taking in the conical flask itself what are the contents primary aromatic amine concentrated hcl sodium nitrate and potassium iodide and this all will uh, be taken in the conical flask itself uh, in uh, keeping in ice bath the reaction is allowed to proceed once uh, uh, the diazonium salt is completely formed in 
insoluble disodium salt that you have to note down insoluble insoluble means it will form as a precipitate disodium dyes will be forming as a precipitate where nitrous acid will be existing as such excess and this will be converting potassium iodide added to the iodine added to the solution and that will be converted to iodine and that iodine is uh, titrated with sodium thiosulfate mm. so how many reactions are taking place in the conical plus conversion of sodium nitrate to nitrous acid one reaction then that nitrous acid converts primary aromatic amine to disonium salt that is second reaction and what is third reaction nitrous acid converts potassium iodide to iodine this is third reaction and this liberated iodine is again uh, reacting with buret content mm. that is fourth reaction will be the titration actual titration reaction mm. That is iodine reacting with sodium thiosulfate. And once all the iodine present in the conical flask reacted with uh, sodium thiosulfate, excess iodine will give blue color with the starch. Starch is used as external indicator. One drop of, you can use a tile, white uh, tile, uh, where you can take um, a drop of starch solution, a drop of conical flask content. Uh, until it gives blue color, the reaction is monitored. Uh, once uh, excess iodine is present, then it is added with a uh, uh, starch it will give blue color so that is the indication of endpoint in indirect method okay so this is how uh, indirect method is done for disodization process for insoluble disonium salts for soluble disonium salts will be going with a uh, direct method only what are the other methods available hmm? The main principle involved in this method is the formation of the diazo oxide which is more stable than diazo compound yeah, formation of diazo oxide which is more stable than diazo compound where diazo compounds are unstable at elevated temperature so comparing this diazo compounds diazonium salts diazo oxides will be stable so the formation of this reaction is monitored in diazonium uh, titration for example the amino phenol is readily oxidized uh, amino phenol it is fast disodizable compound right we have seen uh, fast disodizable compounds what are fast compounds aniline amino phenol and toluidine so amino phenol will be fastly forming disonium salt um, so this will be readily oxidized by nitrous acid and converted to quinones amino phenol will be converted to quinones in the presence of copper sulfate copper sulfate also oxidizing agent so in presence of copper sulfate um, this will be oxidized amino phenol will be readily oxidized and so the reaction is very fast by means of nitrous acid where how nitrous acid is uh, obtained the reaction between sodium nitrate and concentrated hydrochloric acid and that converts amino phenol to quinones in presence of copper sulfate solution then it forms diazo oxide compounds uh, and diazo oxide is more stable than diazo compounds and this readily undergoes coupling reaction with the nitrous acid mm. and, uh, coupling reaction means to form uh, a disonium compound only and yeah, really undergoes coupling reaction with the nitrous acid so this is what another method of uh, uh, analyzing disonium salts okay amino phenol uh, taking example as amino phenol converting into quinones and quinones it goes for formation of uh, diazo compounds uh, by means of coupling reaction with the nitrous acid let's see about advantages of um, disodization process so now uh, how many methods are available uh, uh, behind a disodization method direct method indirect method and other method other method uh, getting a diazo oxide hmm, in this method comparing with getting disonium salts what are the oxidizing agents are used copper sulfate and nitrous acid nitrous acid only source for converting amino phenol to diazo oxide hmm, where copper sulfate is as a mediator hmm, to form a quinone and in presence of quinones uh, means that quinones will go for forming diazo oxides through coupling reaction okay with the nitrous acid Quinones are considered as intermediate products like nitrosamine. Yeah, during the formation of diazo compounds, what um, tautomeric form of uh, disonium compound is obtained? Nitrosamine. And this nitrosamine goes for tautomerization and it gives disonium compound. Likewise, quinone is the intermediate here when uh, amino phenol is converted to diazo oxide. Okay. 
has see the advantages it is selective for all the types of sulfonamides sulfonamide drugs sulfur drugs okay sulfur drugs are assayed by mainly disulfonization method so it is very selective for all types of sulfonamides then it is sensitive hmm? only primary aromatic amines can form disonium salts none of other acids or other compounds will not be forming uh, disulfonization process so it is very sensitive and it is reproducible the reaction will be uh, very accurate so that that um, you can get very uh, reproducible and uh, repeatable results behind disodization titration um, the action will be very accurate okay and selective sensitive all the terms we can apply for advantages of uh, disodization titration okay it is selective sensitive and reproducible selective means it is selective for primary aromatic amines for example a sulfonamides and it is sensitive only primary aromatic amines can form disonium salts during this titration and it is reproducible whatever results we get can be reproducible okay so that's what what are the advantages says about advantages of uh, disodization method now let's see what are the disadvantages of this method it is a uh, relatively slow when compared to other methods definitely it will time uh, take more time it is time consuming process and in order to get dyes we need to get complete formation of dye so we need to allow nearly 10 to 15 minutes for the reaction itself um, and you have to maintain temperature before starting your titration between 0 and 5 degrees celsius so you need to maintain many conditions right so it is very slow relatively slow when compared to other other methods other methods involves other titration methods like acid based titration complexometry precipitation mm, so different titrations uh, it is low then temperature conditions to be properly maintained throughout the reaction you cannot allow to increase the temperature only so always temperature below 5 degree celsius must be maintained until the completion of titration mm. so this is another disadvantage then the end point deduction is very difficult since you have to take uh, each and every drop of uh, conical flask content and you need to keep in the paper external indicator where you will uh, where uh, you can find the loss of uh, conical flask content uh, drop by drop it will be uh, loss in its uh, solution so the reaction also uh, will be what um, uh, will be slow or increased and end point deduction will not be very accurate since the, there is loss of uh, reagents occur in the conical flask content when we use external indicator that's why the end point uh, deduction is very difficult in this process hmm? the color produced is not stable the dye color that is disonium dye formation color is not uh, produce color produced is not stable since uh, the disonium salt will be soluble in nature and it is not stable above 5 degree celsius also so that uh, it will not be stable for long time so immediate end point deduction must be done hmm? and if you maintain the temperature below 5 degree celsius only the disonium salt will not go for or will not lose its stability mm, you can uh, analyze the end point very accurately but it is not possible always and then lack of specificity lack of uh, specificity this represents some um, um, that and that to end point deduction only it is very difficult we discuss now that is representing with this point it is lack of specificity specificity means um for it is not a very specific for all the compounds and applicable for very less variety of samples only primary ar aromatic amines can be analyzed by disodization method ma kada satunga applicable for very less variety of samples only uh, only few compounds can be analyzed by disodization method so these are all the advantages and disadvantages of disodization process what are the advantages selective for primary aromatic amine sensitive and reproducible where uh, disadvantages are um uh, re uh, relatively slow that is time consuming process then temperature must be maintained throughout the reaction the in point deduction is difficult the color produced the dye formed uh, will not be stable then lack of specificity then applicable for only less variety of samples that to whichever sample is containing primary aromatic amine only can be analyzed by disodization methods mm -hmm. so these are all the disadvantages can we move on to uh, applications now clear no regarding methods and uh, advantages and disadvantages now we have seen the second part methods direct indirect and other methods and advantages and disadvantages of disodization method let's move on to applications now so what are the compounds uh, will be analyzed by
primary aromatic amine containing groups uh, so what uh, let's see what are in it so that that can be analyzed or uh, titrated by disodization method what are the drugs sulfonamides as already we have seen sulfonamides here sulfonamides will be having primary aromatic amine group then chlorophenyramine chlorophenyramine it's not a chlorophenyramine chlorophenyramine then dopamine procaine amphetamine uh, again uh, procaine is repeated ephedrine then para amino benzoic acid PABA, it is called as a para amino benzoic acid so these are all compounds can be analyzed by uh, di uh, disodization titration method and some other drugs also which contains amino group can be analyzed sulfonamides it is another one broad category of drug molecule then chlorpheniramine dopamine procaine amphetamine ephedrine and para amino benzoic acid these different category of drugs with primary aromatic amines can be titrated with disonium disotization titration method okay so with this i'm completing disotization process since um, in your syllabus no specific compound has been given for um, like uh, performing experiment eh? like uh, in the syllabus so during a uh, lab hours you will be doing disotization method so where you will be learning what are all the different reagents are added and what are the roles of different reagents um, and how disodium salt is formed and what are the different drugs you are analyzing everything how it is calculated for quantity and purity okay so this is another broad category of titration what we have discussed in now so with this uh, unit 3 has been completed uh, from next class we'll be seeing about unit 4 that is redox titration methods okay redox means reduction and oxidation process mm -hmm. so what are the different uh, chemical reactions we have seen in titration methods acid base complex formation then uh, precipitation then gravimetry and yeah, there also precipitation only and then um, we have seen uh, disodization right so these are all various chemical reactions involving titration methods we have seen next we'll be seeing reduction and oxidation process of problem uh, involved in titration analysis that is redox titration method so with this basic principles, methods, and applications behind uh, disodization titration has been completed. For any doubts, you can ask here. If you get many doubts, uh, you can write in your notebook what are the doubts you have. Scan the uh, points and send it to me in the WhatsApp. I will be clarifying. Or else you can post in the classroom also. In the stream, you can post your doubts. Okay. I'll be clarifying with resources, with the proof, with references. Okay. I'll be giving you. Now, one point is clear, right? Potassium bromide is clear why it is added to foster the disonium salt formation. One more ammonium sulfate is added to remove potassium, uh, so, uh, means nitrous acid. And what type and what case we need to remove nitrous acid that we need to find out will uh, uh, means refer the content and will tell you. Okay. Is there any doubt? For any doubts, you can ask questions or post it in the chat box. No? No response? So nobody is listening, right? All are safe, right? Is there any health issues? Anybody is having in the class? No, no. Okay, be safe and take care. Thank you for your response. Mm, thank you, Kuvarasan, Sudhir, Naveen, Okipa. We'll meet in the next class. Mm, study well.